Hey, today we're going to talk about the COVID bounce and the whole new world that's created moving forward. It's going to be a bit of a tough love conversation about the fact that things will never be the same again, but if you embrace this change, it can be very good for your business. This is The Rare Advisor, proud to be a part of the Advisor Advancement Network and home of a business model supercharged by recurring and repeatable events. Your host is Mike Walters, CEO of USA Financial. He is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member of FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Hey, welcome to The Rare Advisor. Today, I want to talk about something super, super important, super serious, and that is the COVID bounce and the whole new world it has created for everyone moving forward. This is a bit of what I would call a family moment. This is when we have a tough love conversation about the fact that things will never be the same again and that that is not a bad thing if you embrace and capitalize on the change. Change is always good if you know how to embrace it. And that's what we need to talk about because what has happened is that the businesses that were affected and impacted in a negative way the most during the COVID pandemic, either they don't exist anymore or they've embraced the change, they've retooled, they've figured things out, and they're probably hitting new highs, establishing new high watermarks inside of their business. So that's the fork in the road. That's what every financial advisor needs to look at their own practice and figure out for themselves. Have they embraced the change? Have they adjusted accordingly? And have they capitalized on this new opportunity of a new world that now exists? And are they hitting those new high watermarks? Or are they still hunkered down? Are they not performing the way they used to? Are their numerics in a negative position? Have they declined in, a, in the various important aspects of how you would gauge or measure their practice? So I want to walk through a couple of different things because there's a lot of really interesting information out there right now. Now, this is an article from the Wall Street Journal. It's actually about the Cheesecake Factory. And the reason I want to use this is because I want to show you how they have done exactly what we're talking about. So it doesn't really matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter that you're in a financial services business, that you're a financial advisor running a practice, or if you're a restaurateur, right? The restaurants were probably hit as hard or harder than just about any other segment of the economy. And yet certain restaurants are thriving and others are dying. So why is that? Again, how did they embrace and adjust to the change? So here we go. This is the Cheesecake Factory. And if you've never been to a Cheesecake Factory, it's what you would think. I mean, you probably have heard of them because of the cheesecake. But the restaurant itself had a menu that was ridiculous. It was like an encyclopedia. I couldn't even tell you how many items were on it. It's been probably, probably it was, I'd say the year before the pandemic was the last time I was in a Cheesecake Factory. And the menu was absolutely overwhelming. Well, what happened was, as you can see here on their quarterly sales, when COVID struck and the pandemic hit, here's what happened to their sales. They since have retooled their business. It's a great article. Go check it out. It's called How Cheesecake, uh, excuse me, How Cheesecake to Go Saved the Cheesecake Factory. It's an article in the Wall Street Journal. It just came out on, I don't see the date right here, but it came out uh, towards the end of October. I believe it was October 29th. Now, in here, they talk about what they did and how they had to retool and think about their business entirely differently than they did before. But most importantly, look what happened. Here's their sales leading up to COVID. Then we see this dramatic drop in COVID. And then as they scrambled and started to figure things out, look where they are now. They have set a new high watermark for where they are with their business. This is happening everywhere. This is not unique to the Cheesecake Factory. It's not unique to the financial services industry. It's not unique to any sector of business because this is how the best will continue to grow and thrive and the lessers will shrivel up under duress and we simply will see them kind of disappear. So let's talk about financial services. Now this happens to be the aggregated growth chart for USA Financial. 
Now, the reason this is a quick, good reference tool is because we are simply a mirror image of the affiliated advisors who choose to do business with us. So we are kind of a reflection of what goes on in the marketplace. And if you go all the way back to the year 2000 and bring it all the way up to 2021, this is our aggregated growth line. Now in there, what you'll find is we're averaging about 5% growth per quarter, which I think that tallies out to, you know, north of 20%, like 22, 23%, something like that on average annual growth moving forward, which means that on average, the advisors affiliated with us are experiencing that sort of growth. Because again, we're basically a mere reflection of what's going on in the aggregated advisor world that's affiliated with us. So most importantly, look up here. So here's what the pandemic looked like for us. Transactional revenue in particular dropped, recurring revenue hung in there, and then look at the twist and the turnaround that's come up, and, and there we are, sitting at new high watermarks, just like Cheesecake Factory. Looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? In fact, their nosedive was even deeper than ours before they hit their quick recovery. Very, very interesting. So, we see that at the high level, but you got to peel back the onion a little bit. And there's two layers of that onion I think are really worthy of discussing. So, Warren Buffett has a great line that so many people like to reference. You know, when the tide goes out, you'll figure out who's been swimming naked. Well, the tide went out during COVID. And it revealed a lot of different things about a lot of different businesses and about a lot of different financial advisors and how they dealt with their customers. But one of the things that it revealed, which is kind of interesting that I wasn't counting on, is uh, McKinsey and Company did a study. And I think this is really interesting. What they identified is that the group of customers who are working with an advisor that is what I'll call... Um, comprehensively licensed, meaning they can sell insurance, annuity, and, and various uh, agent-type contract commissionable programs, products, and the like. They are, say, a registered rep, and they have access to those typical transactional-type items. And they are also either an IAR or an RIA, and they have access to the fee revenue and so on. And what, you, what they found was, in looking at this, you know, there's been a lot of people in the industry who have said that the higher wealth individual only wants to work with a fee only type of an advisor. And I've always contended that is totally not true. In fact, it's probably the opposite of true, in my opinion, because certain product lines are specifically built and perform best in either the transactional category or in the ongoing fee category. And if you need for the financial plan, estate plan, whatever it is you're building, if you need a commissionable product and that's the best solution, you have to be able to provide that. And if you're fee only, you can't. If you're commission only, you can't provide the other side, right? So I think it's important that you are compre comprehensively represented in the industry so that you can comprehensively take care of your clients. So with that being said, what you'll see here is that they're saying that when we look at all clients, 25% of them only hold fee accounts, 41% of them only hold transactional accounts, 34% of them are hybrid, meaning they have both fee accounts and transactional accounts in their portfolio. But here's the kicker. For clients with $2 million in assets invested and above, look at how dramatic this becomes. Only 15% of them are in fee only. Only 24% of them are in transactional only. 61% of them are hybrid. They have both transactional accounts and fee accounts inside of their portfolio. So I think this is really important because what's happened is some of the data that's come out COVID related or otherwise has started to show the importance of that comprehensive approach in the marketplace. Now, speaking of comprehensive approaches, how are you communicating with your clients? This has changed dramatically with the onset of the pandemic and the fact that we all went through lockdowns. 
we've talked previously on, on the Rare series here about how the fact that your older clientele have now been forced to learn technology because they wanted to stay in touch with the grandkids as everybody was locked down. So now they know how to use FaceTime. They know how to use Zoom calls. They know how to use Microsoft Teams and so on. And so this is very interesting. This uh, this actually is coming from CNBC. It's an article titled, Advisors are changing how they communicate with clients due to the pandemic. Here's what to expect. Now, here they're saying that in-person meetings, I'll hold that up there so you can get a quick view. In-person meetings before the pandemic represented 56% of people preferred in-person meetings. During the pandemic, it dropped to just 12%. Honestly, it's higher than I thought. And post-pandemic, they're expecting it to rise back up to 41%. Now, keep that in mind. 56, down to 12, back up to 41. Here we come down to video call. Prior to the pandemic, 2%, 2% preferred using video communications. During the pandemic, it swelled to 48%. It's the number one numeric, the highest numeric during the pandemic. People preferred video conversations with their advisor. Now, post-pandemic, they're expecting it to settle in at 34%. So suddenly, live meetings, face-to-face -face in your office, 41%. Zoom calls and the like, video calls, 34%. Everything else is a distant second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth and right on down the line. So what we see is the entire economy for financial advisors dealing with their clients is shifting and has moved and has permanently moved. Now it's a pendulum, right? It used to be way over here. It swang way over here, and now it's going to settle in the middle. It used to be heavily, heavily driven, 56%. Uh, nothing else came into a close second. 56% of people preferred conversations face-to-face. -face. During the pandemic, it went all the way to the other side. Video conversations went from a minuscule 2% up to 48% preferring that. And now what they're saying is as things settle in a post-pandemic environment, your clients, they want that option. They want to be able to talk to you in person, and they probably will, especially on the front end of a new uh, relationship. But once the relationship gets up and running, they're probably going to be very comfortable with Zoom calls, or maybe you meet them face-to-face -face once per year in Zoom calls the other parts of the year, or whatever the case might be. But it's going to settle with right in the middle, 41% face-to-face, 34% on video calls. So these are the kinds of change that you can embrace. Look at how much easier it is today to service a snowbird. If you're an advisor in a northern state and your clients all head to Florida for the winter and you've in the past struggled on communications during that period of time and now they are all very comfortable using Zoom calls and you can communicate with them the way we're talking right now, all of the sudden your geographical boundaries mean very little or a whole lot less than they used to anyway. So these are very important kind of litmus tests. These are the leading indicators to show you that the change is there. You can embrace the change and you can still hit those high watermarks. Just like we talked about with Cheesecake Factory, just like we use as the example of USA Financial being a reflection of the advisors who work with us, hitting those all new high watermarks. So if this is not happening for you in your practice, you need to embrace the change. You need to retool some things. You probably need to think differently than you've thought before. So that's what I'll say to that segment. If you've been hitting the high watermarks, if you're bouncing back, maybe not bouncing back quite the way you want or whatever the case might be, for you who have already started to embrace this, what I'll say here is small hinges swing very large doors. There are little tweaks that you need to make to that ongoing process that will be ultra important to you moving forward. A small hinge, a small tweak can swing a very large door, especially during times change. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Uh, we'll be back again soon. My only request is please give us a subscription, give us a thumbs up, let us know we're doing a good job. Thank you.